Hey, hey, Drunk Spider Man here with some more Killing Floor 2. Yeah, well, that's not very surprising, I'm sure, but, you know, that's just the way things are. So, deal with it. Um, this is uh, Biotics Lab, and I'm starting on Wave 3 because I didn't feel like making my own game, and uh, um, it's a pretty good map. Uh, I'm playing a medic, but uh, if you looked in the bottom left hand corner, you'd probably see that. Um, I've been doing a bit of playing since the last time, um, last time I recorded, so I am a level 11 medic now, which is pretty amazing. Well, not amazing, but pretty awesome. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this game, uh, so get ready for that. Um, one of the things that I like a lot about this game is what I'm currently doing now, and that is shootout lights. Um, like, it's just little stuff like that, that like kind of immerse you a little bit more in the world. Um, and it serves a mild, minor practical reason. Just like, um, for instance, the Commando and the Berserker. Their first, when they reach level 5, the first uh, kind of upgrade they get for uh, for that class uh, is Night Vision. And as a Berserker, it's hard to level up because you have to run in close to melee enemies, whereas everyone else can just shoot them with guns. So because of that, it is a harder class to level up. Um, so the nice part about being able to shoot out lights and having night vision is the fact that you can just go, especially in um, in blunt, er, Paris and Flames, you can just run to, because um, like, there's like a subway underneath, or the tube as the uh, what you call it, underneath, um, and you can shoot all the lights down there and it's very hard to see unless you have night vision. And then all you have to do as that berserker or as that commando is just shoot or stab at your enemies. So yeah, so there's a minor minor practical reason, and it's just really cool. Plus, if you're down there fighting and you're throwing grenades and there's sirens and what have you, um, it's going to be a lot harder to uh, it's going to be a lot harder to uh, to fight down there the longer you fight down there because you can or because sirens will blow out those lights, and so will grenades and stuff like that, um, stray bullets. Um, so it's just kind of stuff you have to watch out for, and like like I said, little stuff like that that just kind of helps build the world, like just makes me love this game even more. Um, so difference between the medic in Killing Floor One and Two, uh, the the well one the weapons um, in Killing Floor One it was all either SMGs or assault rifles, um, whereas now you have you're using one of each uh, one of each class's weapons. Um, so start with your medic pistol. Um, the next one up is the Medic SMG, um, and then after that it's the Medic Shotgun, and the top tier Medic Gun right now is the Medic Assault Rifle. Um, so that's that's one of the big that's one of the bigger differences. Another one is your medic darts actually seek out friendlies, uh, which is um, significantly easier than in the first game. Whereas first game you had to like gauge distance and how long it takes for your dart to travel and all that stuff. You do not have to worry about that whatsoever in this one. Um, if I if, if you scope in on an ally and they're wounded, a little reticle shows up like that and you hear a little beep. Uh, that beep. Um, and that means you have them locked on. So if you shoot with them like almost immediately after you hear that beep, you will hit them regardless. Um, which is excellent. Uh, other things are like the whole thing with um, uh, with the skills within the uh, like within the perks. Uh, I should probably start calling it the way or calling it properly. Um, and that in like the biggest difference between that and you know before was this would all be inside the class menu in Killing Four One, um, but now you have to. Um, Make, like you can customize it a little bit more so like you can see um, with conditioning which is the level 5 one you can go healing surge or enforcer uh, and then with medical technician you can have um, starting body armor and discount on body armor or you can heal body armor when you heal allies um, uh, sorry I just want to this door real quick um, and because of that like you can customize your play a little bit more which is pretty nice, actually. I, I enjoy it. Um, like it adds a little more, little more uh, customization to it, more than skins, uh, like it is now, uh, or like it, like Killing for One was. 
Uh, and yeah, uh, it, uh, it seems pretty awesome. So I was watching uh, Dev Diaries because, uh, like before this game came out, because like, like you probably guessed I'm going to have a big part on for this game. Um, and they're talking about like the natural progression of the medic weapons. Um, and I loved it. So if you look at the medic pistol, um, it is the, like essentially the grip, the trigger, um, and essentially like kind of like the barrel assembly of it is the same from that if uh, as the SMG. So if you look, ah, oh, he did the wrong animation. That's okay. So, oh, that's great. Um, so if you look, see that handle, that trigger? It basically just looks like they took it right off the, um, uh, right off the pistol and stuck it on this. Or, like, the pistol slowly evolved into the assault. Um, uh, and then, uh, if I remember, I will show you with, it's the same thing with the shotgun and with the assault rifle. Like, it just looks like the natural progression of that weapon. Like, it started out as a pistol, and they up, then they, like, change it up, you know, increase the firing speed, and then it was the SMG. And they're like, hey, let's switch things up a bit and do a, uh, do a shotgun, and then, um, the top one is the, uh, um, is the assault rifle. But even the shotgun reload, reloads in the hand, um, which is different from the other shotguns in the game, like besides the, well even then, uh, I was going to say besides the A12, but that is also, uh, that is not reloaded in the handle, it's reloaded in the drum, because that thing is scary. Um, I have been branching out playing other classes, but uh, uh, I, I do enjoy the medic, uh, and I didn't at all in the first one, uh, which is weird that I've warmed up with so much in the second game. Um, but, I mean, I do like its weapons, I do like the more variety of it. Uh, like, there's a reason why I don't play the Commando, and it's because I do not like the, uh, the Commando's guns that much. I don't know, it's just personal choice, like, I know a lot of people play on, like, this guy. He's playing the Commando. Um, I, I prefer support over Commando. Um, and, uh, and because of this game, like, like, I don't know, um, I find playing the Medic is a lot more, um, like, is a lot more in-depth, you know? Like, you're not... Like, it's a lot more important. Um, like, even on the easier levels, like, I'm still, like, as you're looking, like, I'm still healing guys almost constantly. Um, including myself. Oh, which is real, uh, really nice. But, um... Sorry, I'm burping a little bit, which you probably don't want to hear, but... Um, another... <laughs> another thing that Apple actually pointed out to me, I didn't even notice it. Um, but Killer Apple was just like, hey, did you notice this? And it is, um... Uh, one, if you hit R at all, in um, like if you have a full mag, if you hit the reload button, um, your character ch checks diff various parts on the gun, um, or just flips it like it is with the pistol. Um, but the thing Apple pointed out was, if you fire off a couple shots and you reload, you keep that mag. Um, but if you empty your mag and then reload, you drop it. Like. <laughs> like it's just little stuff like that 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 get me super excited about this game, um, like which is what like kind of weighs in on like the whole like it's really polished. It's just lacking some of the meat. Um, and if you didn't watch the last video, it I'm, by meat I mean um, like different classes, uh, different weapons, um, different monsters, um, and maps. But at the same time, that is like like I, again like I said in that video, uh, my previous video. Um, yeah, I'm not worried about it whatsoever, um, especially with Tripwire doing this game, because it was exact. That's that's exactly how the first game progressed. Like when the first game came out, like it had very little anything, and then uh, and then out of nowhere, it just started getting all kinds of content, and uh, it is the Killing Floor one that we know and love. So I'm I'm expecting this to turn into that, um, and just get more and more. Uh, content over the years because um, they were still publishing content uh, what like five years six years after the game originally came out which is crazy um, and and yeah uh, I'm excited uh, another thing I'm looking forward to about this game which I have no idea if they're gonna do or not but I'm feeling they might because again it, yeah, it wasn't the first one and this game is just a fancier first one which is awesome um, is uh, holiday events I'm really excited to see if they do holiday events. Um, and if you don't, if you haven't played the first game at all, basically what they, hmm, sorry, basically what they did is on uh, certain holidays. So, uh, like once Steam did a summer sale, uh, during Christmas, um, what else? Uh, Halloween, Halloween's another big one. 
they reskin all the zombies, or all the Zeds, sorry, uh, or specimens, uh, as they call them in the first game. Uh, they reskin them all, uh, give you new, uh, uh, new sound, like new voices, um, and, uh, and new maps. And during those holidays, they come out, and then you can play those maps for the year. But the crazy thing about it was the fact that, like, you'd be fighting gingerbread men instead of Scrape, or instead of uh, Gorfas, and uh, and Scrakes were uh, what were Scrakes? I can't remember. But all the bloats were Santas, uh, like for the Christmas for the Christmas event, like just stuff like that. Like it, it just like it just breathed life into the game again, and it's made it so much more fun to play. So. If there's, uh, is there, if there's any devs watching this, which I highly, highly doubt, because I'm only getting six hours. Well, I shouldn't be saying only getting, but um, my channel only, only has 17 subscribers, uh, and I doubt any of those are going to be devs. Anyway, but uh, if they're watching that, I really hope, I really hope that you guys do it. Like, super, but yeah, yeah, I can really, really hope. Um, another thing I like to uh, point out real quick is... Um, uh, same thing like with Killing Floor 1, they like to put in a lot of Easter eggs into their games. Um, one of them that uh, I'm s I hope it pans out, or, or uh, um, yeah, really hope it pans out, but I don't know if it will or not, is this thing I'm looking at right now. It's a big old thing, it's got Master DNA Control uh, HZX001 Patriarch. Now the Patriarch is the boss you fought in the first game. That picture right there is not the Patriarch. Um... And it's not the guy you're fighting at the end of the, um, at the end of, like, the, he's not the boss in this game, like, in Killing Floor 2, either. So, uh, I have no idea what that is, but I have a feeling it's gonna show up. <laughs> um, in the near future, in an update, that's gonna be, like, uh, when they come, like, my guess is when they come up with new maps, they're going to put, uh, um, he's gonna be, um, be the boss fight on those other maps, that Patriarch, the, um, I, I don't even remember what that code was, um, but, uh, yeah, like, that, um, uh, that is something I could very well see them doing, is putting this monstrosity in here, um, I don't think it's gonna be looking exactly like that, he might have a gun on this arm right here, um, but, uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see, uh, but I'm, I'm willing to put money on it, that he's gonna show up, um, what else, what else, what else, um, mechs make a good tank in this game, uh, for people that don't know, because they do get more ammo, 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 they do get more, uh, body armor and health, um, uh, I don't know what I was trying to say earlier with ammo, like health and ammo, uh, but yeah, they do have more body armor and health. Plus, they can heal themselves better than a the player. So, I mean, they make pretty good tanks. Um, not as good as the Berserker, because the Berserker, if you have a melee weapon out, you can block, and when you block, you will stagger enemies. Um, which is uh, uh, amazing. Like, awesome mechanic. Really glad they put that in there. Um, you can even st you can stagger thresh, thresh pounds. Flesh pounds, if you time it right. Um, which, yeah, was like... Yeah, it, it's great. Oh, speaking of the devil, or speak of the devil, and he shall appear. Sorry, bro. Have some help. Um, uh, yep, that's a flesh man. Uh, which you wouldn't have seen in my other videos. Uh, he is an a-hole. Uh, he's essentially the the toughest of the mini bosses. Um, he'll show up in the waves. Sorry about the squeaky. My dog is content with a squeaky toy. Um, uh, I'm actually going to talk a bit about the zombies. Uh, because I haven't done that yet about this game. So, if you guys have watched my Killing Floor 1 video, you know the different zombie types, so you know that that's a stalker. Um, uh, that is a uh, crawler. Uh, I can hear a stalker. Um, but one of the things you... Uh, that's a bloat, and those guy, that dude that was charging towards me right there was a clock. Now, what's cool, uh, the... Cr oh, that's, that's a Gorefast. Uh, those red guys, those clots. Um, so one of the things that are different about this game than the, uh, um, the Killing Floor 1, zombie-wise, is there are now different variants on clots. Now, I cannot remember their names, but the best way of thinking about it is aggression types. So, um, how, um, how they move, how they act, how aggressive they are towards the player. Now, um, let's see if I can find... So, these guys, these little... Uh, it's hard to tell them from up here. Okay, so, this guy that's walked towards me right here... That, that's like a standard plot. Um, they'll walk right towards you, they're out to get you. Um, they're kind of middle of the line. This dude in front, get out of my way, Flushbound. That guy right there, 
Um, he is uh, the more aggressive type. I believe it's like, I think he has like a weird name, like a rage or that's a normal one. Hey, buddy. Um, uh, yeah, like, I don't know. I can't remember his name. Um, but uh, he's, he's the aggressive type. He's spiky. He just kind of charges towards you. He's usually the first one to get you in the starting waves. Um, and then the other type, which you can't really see, but he's got like a really weird face. It's got like sunken in eyes and a weird mouth. Um, he is the almost passive type. Like he'll still come towards you, he'll still like attack you, but he's mostly, I wouldn't say, well, passive is not the best word, but like he's hes the least aggressive of all of them. Um, I just like shooting out plates with my backup pistol. Um, uh, but yeah, he's the least aggressive of them. Um, like he's still nasty, but uh, yeah. Um, another awesome thing about this game that's different than the first one is melee attacks with any weapon. See, you can hit guys. Um, if you do it on smaller mobs, it will stagger them. Um, bigger mobs, it will not. Um, but I believe this video has been going on long enough. Um, so I'm going to end it here. Um, thank you guys for Hurry watching. Up. And uh, don't forget to uh, tell, tell a potted plant, a business casual potted plant, really, because, you know, they're kind of standard of the mill, like just nice stuff. Um, don't tell her, her Horzine, Horzine, because uh, they'll make a zombie about it. And uh, call this number, because who knows, it might actually be a secret, because that looks like an actual number. Although it doesn't have an area code, but do it anyway, because uh, every little bit helps. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye!